So speaking of the poetry of human experience, you mentioned the images of the black holes. How did it make you feel a few years ago when that first image came out? It's truly amazing. A sense of, well, I guess the feeling was both amazing and, and there was a little sense of, um, jealousy is not quite the right word, but a sense of longing. Yeah, I think that's a better word because here's a subject that started with Einstein back in 1915, writes down the equations of the general theory of relativity. And then there are scores of individuals over the decades, you know, starting with people like Carl Schwarzschild, who analyze the equations, see the possibility of black holes. People develop these ideas. John Wheeler, all these greats of physics. It's still a hypothetical subject. It gets closer to reality through observations of the center of our galaxy, stars whipping around in a manner that could only really be explained by there being a black hole in the center of our galaxy, but it was still indirect. Hmm. To actually have a direct image that you can look at, what a beautiful arc, narrative arc from the theoretical to the absolutely established. And that's what we hope will happen with other areas, for instance, string theory, right? I mean holy mathematical subject at the outset and still pretty much a holy mathematical subject today. Yeah, do we long for that image where we can look at it and say, string, it's real. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, oh, how thrilling, how mm -hmm. thrilling to be part of that journey, to be part of that, that step that moves things from the abstract to the concrete. Yeah, uh, so like the image of the DNA, the early images of the DNA, sure. for example. Uh, but there is something special. So the problem with strings is they're tiny. So it's harder to take a picture. I, in, the, in, in the following sense, when you think of a black hole, I mean, you have a swirl of, I guess, what is, I, I don't even know, it's dust, whatever, light. Accreting onto the yeah. uh, event horizon. And then there's darkness yeah. in the center. And you you just imagine, so that picture in particular, I guess if it, is of a gigantic black hole. So you just, I mean, it's yeah. terrifying. Billion, billion, billions of times the mass of the sun. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's both exciting and terrifying. I mean, I don't I don't know where you fall on the spectrum. I think it's exciting at first. Like the longer I think about it, every time I think about it, the more terrifying it becomes. So it always starts exciting and then it goes to terrifying. <laughs> and both are feelings, very yeah. human feelings that I appreciate. <laughs> it's like terrified awe somehow. Yeah. It's still beautiful. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a good way of saying it. And I think I kind of share that that reaction because there is a way in which when you work on this subject, like all the time, I teach it, I teach about black holes, write the equations on the blackboard. The ideas reside in a very cognitive, I don't know, mathematical portion of the brain, or at least for me. And it's only when you like sit down and it's quiet and you start to contemplate, wait, 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 this isn't just like a mathematical game. Mm -hmm. There are these monsters out there. Now, I don't, not in a, in a, in a sense of I fear for my life, but it's a, a sense of how extraordinary is this universe. And so it is breathtaking. How and powerful nature how, is. Yeah, and how, how stupendously most. powerful <laughs> nature is. Um, and so there is a, a deep sense of humility that I think this instills if you really allow the ideas to sink in.